Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. I'm so excited to interview uh, Mark and Panna. Mark Wildman and I are hosting a retreat in Thailand, and we have the retreat owner, Panna, who's going to be discussing a bit about the facility and her time training with Mark. So I'm just going to get straight into the interview. We have lots of different questions, and the first one is for Mark. So Mark, why are training with clubs and mace your preferred style of training for the last 15 to 20 years? Clubs and mace and staff and all these other things, weighted swinging implements to me are not just to me, but to everybody in all of human history. They are the basis of human movement. Humans are separate from everything else on the planet because we have thumbs. It allows us to hold on to levers. Levers are tools. Levers allow us to build civilization. Heavy club swinging and mace swinging are the most important types of athletic training that you can do. There is no other. There's no question about that. Club swinging is what defines the movement patterns of humanity and throwing patterns. So all of this stuff gets covered and it's just not talked about enough. Everybody talks about gym training or barbell training or something else, but everybody's leaving out the most important part. If you learn to swing clubs and mace, you will restore the absolute basics of human athletic potential and you can do whatever you want after that. The next most important thing is that it's super economical and it can be done almost anywhere. Clubs and mace are light. You can put them in the back of a car. You can travel with them. You can walk down the street with them. Usually you put them in like a lacrosse bag or something so that they're not sticking out, but it's economical. Once you buy a weight, they don't go bad and they're there for absolutely ever. And you can learn to train absolutely anywhere. So we replace a lot of fancy, expensive equipment with durable equipment and education and we try to restore the most important things back to movement to humanity and then people go back to living the way that they should be pain-free and able to learn other new things Did i get that yeah oh, that's yeah. good so I just started meeting with Panna over a year ago, and I want to invite Panna to share a bit about how, how you started training with Mark. Like, tell us a bit about your story, and I'd love to know about your sport as well, uh, because it's a really unique sport uh, that you've been training with Mark as well. So yeah, fill us in. Okay, so I met Mark about four years ago at his studio in Glendale. Um, I was taking um, an air hammock with Kylie, who was my instructor. And I was like at the beginning of my journey that um, I was learning the flow. And his studio had some like nice heights for me to, go to like, you know, go to and take some classes. That's kind of how we met. And um, I also started talking to Mark about like, you know, my visions, what I wanted to do with the space that I have in Thailand to be able to share with, you know, the people um, like Kylie, you know, or Aerolist kind of all over. Uh, so can I fill in just a little bit of background information on this one for you, Summer? Sure. So awesome. I had an aerial studio in Glendale, which is a neighborhood of Los Angeles for years. And it was really a training studio where we taught kettlebell swinging, heavy club swinging, may swinging, and fight training to like A-list actors. But I am an aerial nerd because aerial circus arts are one of those things that are infinitely good for the human body and mind. They are an infinite amount of complexity. Think of it as pull-ups that just change forever, all day, forever. So we also had aerial rigs in my studio and people would come in and the instructor that Panna is talking about was named Kylie. Kylie she came to me and she wanted me to teach her her aerial. And I was like, show me what you know. And I was like, you need me to teach you how to coach better. And I will let you run as many classes as you want at my studio. So we used to have, have this thing on the weekend where Kylie would bring in and she would show up. There were always a whole pile of women <laughs> from around the world and they would do aerial on Saturday and Sunday starting 10. And that's where uh, Panna came in. So Panna came in and was training with Kylie. Kylie was always one of my favorite people to train with because she was good and she thought about what she was doing in an incredible way, in a way that nobody else thought about stuff. She would like make grid matrices to try to explain the theory of how aerial worked and these really complicated things. There's something called belay and Kylie was the biggest, deepest thinker. That wow, yep. 
Sweet. Well, I'm wondering, are you guys experiencing a little bit of a delay on the, um, yes. what I'd ever seen on the concept of, I'm not. Yes, I'm seeing it. Let's do, I'm going to do a quick pause here and I'm going to see okay. if we all have good Wi-Fi, the joys of filming here. Okay. Mark, how's your Wi-Fi doing? Pretty good. Yeah, I got full. Am oh. I, do I not have full? It says I have full. Yeah, it's, it's just making a little pause, but we're just going to keep rolling with it. Okay. Uh, so, Panna, there was one thing I really wanted to um, have you share with our audience about the retreat center and why you're feeling drawn to create this unique training environment for people to come to, as I know that you're wanting to expand into the aerial community, but yeah, fill us in on your vision for the retreat center. Well, um, I feel like I'll just keep a long story short. So my mom was basically diagnosed with cancer and that's when I started looking into a purpose and what is my purpose in my life and, you know, line up into the purpose of your life is to find your purpose. So when you have everything in a lie, you find a dream and you align yourself with, um, with what you believe in, everything else comes. So I was thinking that like, wow, this is like amazing that what I'm being taught of something that I didn't think that my body was capable of doing. And another one of the things um, that Kylie also taught a lot too is a lot of things that Mark has such a good conditioning body to get ready to do a certain move with Ariel and stuff. So um, I thought instead of having a teacher teaching one hammock, what I wanted to do to support Aerialist community with the property that I have in Thailand. And at that time, it was such a big dream that I didn't think that it could even come true, to be honest. I didn't think that it, I, I would be able to do it in four years. I didn't think I would have enough to be able to do it. And, um, and you know, everything just lined up. Everything just, just really, really made it possible. So um, I have an aerial um, studios, like a Pentagon, um, I mean, the training center, Pentagon, that um, has panoramic view, and I'm able to do eight pulley systems with the height, you know, that's like from 22 feet up to about 28 feet high. Mm. So that's a huge, huge training area that um, it's going to be completed um, and open for public next year, but I don't think I'm going public at this point. It's only gonna be private only. So this is something that's very unique that I'm not even, I put my heart and everything that I have believed in. And Mark was the first person during pandemic that's um, contacted me if this is ready. So this is gonna be very, very spe special that I feel like I'm doing it for the right purpose and to share with the right people. Awesome. Thank you so much, Panna. I just appreciate I, you so much. And I'm so stoked to meet you in person. And Mark's got things to add. Go ahead, Mark. So uh, what I love is that Panna came into the aerial world. And the first thing that she wanted to do was to contribute in a meaningful way. So I had a studio, a place that wasn't specifically for aerial, but it was supported by movie training. But it existed as a place where aerialists could come in from around the world and we would have people come in from like the New England Circus School or Circus Center and we had people coming in from all over the place and people would drop in and it became a place where people could train. What I love about what Pana is doing, Pana, sorry, I'm always doing my okay. A's wrong. Pana's fine. What I love about that is that she's building a place specifically for education, a place that's specifically designed to be a place to learn and a place that is designed uh, in an environment that is meant to encourage learning. This is something that I think is very good. This is what the world needs more of. People going out of their way to make something to be a good experience for other people to come and learn at. Because to me, that's the point of life is to learn more stuff, to go places and to meet new people and to do all this stuff. And Panna has created that for us. And so I've been after her and asking her about this for two, three years now. Like, when can I come? When can we do stuff? When can we come to your place? Yeah, I will, I'll vouch Thank for that. You. I will vouch for that place too. And train at your place. So the fact that it's gonna be me now, kind of amazing. We're gonna have- and I'm, I'm, I'm honored, completely honored. And this is like gonna be so fun to like, for everyone that's get to come, It's it's really about the whole experience and having fun with it. And this is, like I said, 
it's going to be so private that like people might end up being like, where is this place? I, I'm not doing it to even promote the name of the place because good. It, it's really to connect people together. Perfect. Yeah. So two things I'll vouch for. Mark has been sending me pictures of your facility for over two and a half, three years. <laughs> I have this friend. She's got a retreat center in Thailand. Let's talk to her. And oh, so Mark. that's super awesome. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's just been a natural, very organic progression. And I see such a similarity between Panna's uh, training facility and Mark's. They're both not listed to the public, right? The one yeah. in Glendale when you had that tri private training facility. And it kind of creates a different environment when you're not just at a big retreat center with a bunch of other people doing retreat as well. It's a very unique container in that you get you know, you get to really focus in and hone the skills that you're developing and really connect with your cohort. And we'll talk a bit more about some other offerings that are just nearby the facility as well. Okay. Cool, Mark, you got a question coming up here? <clears throat> we have a small delay, so we're just gonna work with it here. Small delay. <laughs> I don't know. If, okay. I don't know if it's on Mark's side or what, but. It seems that you and I are working well, so I'll just I'll just cue in and we'll see if he. Uh, oh yeah, summer now I see it. <laughs> summer, can yep. I ask you a question? Absolutely. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> summer, could you explain to us where Steel Mace Vinyasa falls and what it in the world of training and what its designed purpose is? Sure. So. In the training paradigm that Mark and I are pioneering right now, which is essentially club staff and steel mace, think of it as like a triangle, right? The steel mace portion of the triangle is training complexity, it's training lighter load, and it's training transitions. Transitions in yoga asana, but also transitions, if, even if you're not a yogi, in functional movement patterns. So the steel mace vinyasa practice really ties in and complements heavy club training and staff training. Think of it as uh, on this kind of spectrum where you can undulate back and forth between those three. And what I found is people that come to our workshops with very little experience in either steel mace or steel mace vinyasa, it allows them to tap into flow state a lot easier because there, we're training these specific hit protocols that are progressive in nature and we're adding complexity to the system, but it's not as heavy of a load. So it becomes really accessible for people and helps people with proprioception, balance, strength, mobility, coordination, reaction time. So I come at it from a kinesiology background. So I'm looking at what are the aspects of performance that we're able to coach with steel mace vinyasa. And it just has all those different layers uh, that I just described. And um, I think it really complements what you're doing, Mark, really, really well, because it kind of fills in some, some gaps with more and more footwork and all the other things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Mark, why Thailand for the five-day retreat? How did it happen that we chose to ch choose the retreat uh, to be held at Panna's Center? So uh, Panna's Center to me uh, represents a place where we can all go. And it really fills in an idea of the way that I think that humans should look to live life. Uh, the point of life to me is adventure. And I define that very specifically as going new places, doing new things, and meeting people you've never met before. So Hannah has built this place, and this allows a bunch of people to go on their own personal hero's journey, hero's journey, from the Joseph Campbell sense in the learning sense to Thailand. We get a bunch of people together. They all come from around the world. They plan to go on a journey. They go on this journey to get to a place that they will then meet a bunch of people that they've never met before. They will work on learning things that they didn't know before. They will be there long enough that it will force their brain to change in a way that they otherwise couldn't replicate in their normal environment. And the fact that Panna has gone out of her way to build a place that's specifically designed for learning and it's geometrically designed to be good with all that fun feng shui stuff. I think that that's the really good idea. I've always wanted to go to Thailand. So when Panna said she was building a place, I've been on it ever since. <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go. And I think people should do this at least twice a year. Doesn't have to be our retreat, doesn't have to be Panna's place, but this idea 
of going someplace you've never been, doing something you've never done and meeting people you've never met before and then coming home. I think that people should make it a point to try to do that two times a year for the rest of their life. I'm notorious for never, ever, ever taking a vacation, but I do go places to learn something, which is kind of my version of a vacation because it's always a built-in adventure with a built-in point that I know will develop me differently as a person every time. And if you do that twice a year for 15, 20 years, you end up a better, different person. Thailand, just a great place that I've always wanted to go. And now we have a reason to do it. And we're going to design an experience around it. You could not have said a better way to explain. I'm not very good at speaking in public so i've been very private but you could not have said it a better way of why i did what i did so thank you that was that just hit home thank you yeah i get i've been getting goosebumps throughout this entire interview and we spent about a half hour to like prepping our just what we wanted to share and i just feel like it's just so sincere and we're just so honored to be working with you panna and i know this will be yeah, a long-term working relationship and yeah, happy to have <laughs> I mean, you. Anytime, anything I can do to support. That was beautiful what he just said. And I normally don't get like, people just don't get what I do sometimes. And sometimes I don't explain well, but it's just like, wow, like what you said. And, and this is not even hundred percent done and you guys are coming and it's going <laughs> oh to God, be completely I'm... private and it's going to be so amazing. So anything that this, this, this first group of people need, I'm all there for to service you. Thank you. We feel so supported. So Pana's next question is about the retreat center. And I just want to just preface first that there is a hotel that is directly uh, adjacent to the training center. And so that's where you yes. see all the photos of the uh, yes. very nice lodging and accommodations. And there's a restaurant as well. And there's three organic meals that are included in the facility. Mm -hmm. And then across the street, there's a meditation center. So my question for Panna is, can you, what can you tell us about the local people and traditions in the area that will inform our guests to be respectful and understand the way of life there, specifically related to the meditation temple? So the hotel is actually right in front of the entrance of the temple and the meditation center. So if you're going to go explore the temple, like silence is appreciated. Um, there is a meditation, praying, chanting that happens three times a day. And depending on your guys' schedules, your guests welcome to go in. Just let me know. I can um, prep um, for the outfits. You know, that's no cost to you. I can just make sure we get your size and then you wear what you should be wearing when you go sit with the monks and the nuns. And it usually happens three times at 4 a.m., 1 o'clock, and then 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, and it takes about 45 minutes of the chanting and the meditations, no guided meditation, just completely silent that you just sit and focus on your breathing for about 30 minutes. Um, there is the market that's about like not even 10 minutes away that you can really see a local market where everything is very inexpensive. Like I'm talking like you get a dollar meal, like, like that, you know what I mean? It's fantastic. I, and everyone is so happy there. That's like something that your guests will be able to experience. Um, and it's about 10 minutes. We have full transportation to be able to take you there. 7.30 in the morning, there is an offering that happens every day. You can just get food at a temple and be able and just offer to the monks. And you just kind of have to follow what everyone else is doing. The village people line up what they do. If you want to get that full experience, it's, it's only lasts about 10 minutes. And then the, the monks just give you the blessing. So it's kind of like a nice way to start your day. Um, other than that, just don't, just not wearing any yoga clothes and things like that in the temples or not wearing like a broad hangs or it's just like uh, something tight because it's not appropriate. And if you are a woman, you just want to be respectful, not walking close to the monks where they're like walking, you know, by or walking through. But I think this is, this is, it was, it's a magical place to me and I'm glad I'm able to share this with you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Anything to add there, Mark? No, I'm excited to go. Like I love travel and I've designed a lot of the jobs I've had in my life, like working in the movie business to get an excuse to go these places and do new things. 
so this is now an extension of that outside of my work in the movie business. We're now going to start designing these different experiences around the world so that we can go and be a part of other types of culture so that we can learn. The more we get out of our base home environment and the more we learn to interact with other people around the world, the better our understanding, the more we will want to learn and the better we will react to everything in life. I think that this is a fantastic idea. I'm very excited. I love, <laughs> I love the idea. Me, I love Thailand as the idea from watching movies growing up and I've always wanted to go. So I'm excited to go see this temple and to observe the monks in you make me excited you make me really <laughs> excited working for you that's that's just amazing and there's one other it. really special piece that panna has offered which is the elephant sanctuary and yes. we're going to be going to that on the last day and a portion of the retreat registrations are going to a donation to the elephant sanctuary right. so tell us a bit about that specific sanctuary and your experience with working with them and so that sanctuary um, in Chiang Mai, there is the Elephant Nature Park that everyone goes to. And, uh, you know, they get a lot of people visited. So I like to visit the places that don't have a lot of people go to because you want to reach out to places that really need you. So there's an elephant's family. Um, this is part of the same um, program with Elephant um, Nature Park, but it's called um, Karen Serenity. Um, they're already looking forward to meet you guys, welcome you guys. Um, there is a three years old elephant there with the mom and the dad that is going, waiting for everyone to go feed them. You know, it's a rescue. Um, it's going to be about two hours drive, but you're going to have a full day with them. Just, you know, kind of bathe them, spend the day with them, kind of see how they live. We're going to pick up food and everything. So that's a sanctuary that I have been supporting since I found them because um, when I went to Elephant Nature Park, I, I specifically asked the question, is there, um, is there kind of like their network? Is there a place that really need help? So that's, that's kind of where I was connected with. So I've been supporting them since then. And it's going to be a completely private day that no other tourists or anyone else, but really just your group. Awesome. Thank you so much for all this just extra thought. And there's, you know, there's potential for other excursions too, which we, we will share at the retreat. So my final question for Mark, as we wrap up this interview is why is staff a key component of this five day retreat? And how does it complete the idea of training with clubs and mace? I'm going to bring this back around to the idea that you talked about of a triangle of concepts. So staff, steel mace vinyasa and heavy club swinging. These three things interact together to show people what the base human movement patterns really are and how to get good at them. If you leave out any one of the three, people don't learn as fast. The point of staff is that we start at the beginning and we start having people do reactive drills. And then we don't tell people what the point of the drills are. We let people discover how that they will move if we run the drill long enough, everybody defaults to the same type of movement because that is what the brain and the body are designed or evolved to do. So we let people see what the human body is supposed to do. And then we break out and we work on heavy club swinging and steel mace vinyasa as two different versions of complexity that will then directly link into the staff training idea. We're hitting an idea from every side with this seminar. The staff shows people how the human body will move under a certain series of conditions. Those conditions are designed to be the original conditions of human athleticism. Then we run this learning program over and over and over again, where we jump back and forth between staff, fast, hard to steel mace vinyasa put people into the positions that they will automatically step into with staff have them work on learning how to do each individual position better then jumping over to club and having people move a heavier weight with simpler things and then running the cycle over and over and over again staff shows people that first thing that humans are supposed to do the oldest tools in the world are a rock or a stick so we're going to go with stick because that's what I think the oldest tool is. 
And then everything is designed around that idea. I think this seminar is going to be really fun because we have a full five days, which means that we get to push this idea further than we have in any other staff seminar. And the other staff seminars, we work just on attack, defend drills, attack, defend, walking drills, forward, back, lateral, circle, and then work on multiple people so people learn how to turn around. If anybody's come to our seminar, they know that every time people turn around, they start turning between warrior one and Stand by, small little gap there. <laughs> warrior two, which is in steel maze vinyasa. And then we'll put it there. We're going to put this into get up drills and then getting over drills. So turn around, get up, get over. And then once you've done that, your brain sees the point of everything else. And then the whole athletic spectrum is opened up to people in a way that it's not opened up with any other type of training. It's all an elaborate training trick to show people what's important so that they will be more encouraged to go forward with the most important things and not waste time on stuff that just doesn't matter. And it's ridiculously fun. You should see the people that come to our workshops that we've held so far. We've just done two days, two and a half days or two and a quarter days, two and a, yeah. first five day intensive. And so I'm really excited to see how it lands with people and you need zero experience in staff. Most people come not knowing how to strike. And by the end of this retreat, you will be very, very competent at striking and blocking. And that will definitely embed itself into your nervous system in ways that you never thought possible. So if you have questions, you you can definitely send me a, a like a I have a form on the retreat page it's flowshala.com slash retreats and if you have any questions about travel accommodations the content the daily just send send a message there and I'm the one that answers those and uh we'll be continuing to promote this from now until January it's January 2nd or January 4th through the 9th uh any other final things to add Mark nobody gets out <laughs> out of a seminar like this without getting everything that they want and about 90% we're going to get there's the final tie up no way out of the everybody who comes to this seminar will be different forever it doesn't matter how good you are or how bad you are everybody will come out of this entirely different sweet <laughs> i definitely can vouch for that too um you have time between now and then to train, change so. brain, body, mind. Everybody <laughs> should train. So you have lots of time between now and then to train with Mark's programs. He's got a ton of programs. Go to Wildman Athletica or check out his YouTube. Um, I've got lots of offerings as well if you need Steel Mace Vinyasa support. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Thank you guys so much for doing the interview. It was a pleasure to speak with you guys. And I look forward to seeing you both in January. Thanks, everyone. Yes. Bye.